We... Hello, All everybody. Right. Hello, hello. May... Thank you, everybody, for coming. Take two. This is... Yeah. <laughs> We're actually live this time, so this is already an improvement. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming. This is DEF CON and DEF CON FERS, an introduction. Uh, after this talk, if you want to find more information, you can find us on Twitter, Telegram, at DEFCONFERS, or at our website, dcfers.com, where we constantly keep updates of what we're doing for next year's DEFCON. Um, yeah. I can't control the slides. Allo has to do it for me today, so I'm going to let him step up to the podium. Uh, okay. So it's going to be a relatively quick agenda today. Um, we're going to go through some introductions. There were supposed to be three of us on the stage. Unfortunately, our third kitty is sick and couldn't make it, uh, so it's just going to be me and Allo. Um, but we'll introduce ourselves, introduce you guys to DEF CON, to our con, which is DEF CON FERS, uh, and then talk a little bit about the DEF CON FERS badge. Right. Uh, so first, let me introduce myself. My name is Janaeus. I've been working in tech and information security for about 13 years. Uh, started off as a hacker for hire, hacking cell phones in the back of a barbershop. Uh, finally got a professional Not job as a system all. admin. No, no, it wasn't sketch, I promise. Completely above board. Um, <laughs> finally got a job as a system and network administrator uh, in the gambling field, which was considerably more sketch. Uh, then as a site Legit reliability gambling. engineer. Legit gambling, yes. Legit gambling, slot machines, Vegas, that whole Vegas, fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, finally got a job as a site reliability engineer. Uh, and now I'm an engineering manager running an SRE team of about eight individuals. Uh, I'm also a director of Hack Your Lives, which is the 501c3 behind DEF CON FERS, uh, and I'm the uh, head of infrastructure on the DevOps team of Ferality. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter, at Janeo Snowcat. Allo? Hello! Um, you might have seen me a little earlier in the uh, the community showcase, but um, my name's Al For Fox. every Ferality I... thing ever. I'm, I, you know, I actually logged in this year. Leave me alone, all right? Um, <laughs> uh, so, Ferality, I'm DevOps lead. Uh, you know, we make the things go. And uh, but for Def Confers, I was one of the founders for the Hack Your Lives and the Def Confers uh, group. Uh, also on the board, along with uh, Janeos uh, and um, day job application security engineer, like doing DevOps stuff. Uh, and super into the hacker community and all the crazy shenanigans that go on at DEF CON. It's a real fun time. We're going to tell you a little bit about it. You can find my uh, work Twitter at Metavolp. Uh, my personal account's Alifox, either way. Um, and then uh, we have a slide for Kitty, another board member. Unfortunately, couldn't be here. Uh, but uh, hope you feel better, well. Kitty. Yes. Cool. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about DEF CON, and then for DEF CON first, I'll hand off to Allo. Um, he was one of the co-founders. I did show up at the hotel room that year, but I definitely do not consider myself a co-founder. Um, so DEF CON is the world's biggest hacker convention today, but where did it start? Um, this blurb basically tells you the whole story. Long story short, it was meant as a farewell party for a fellow hacker. Uh, back in 1993, they all got together in a hotel. Um, through a huge party, and then decided that they liked it so much they wanted to come back year after year after year. Uh, and today, it's the biggest conference for computer security professionals, lawyers, federal government employees, who there's actually a contest to spot them at the convention, uh, security researchers, and just people who are interested in learning about information security and security in general. Um, one of the biggest misconceptions I think about DEF CON is that it is only for computer hacking. It's 100% not, and, and I'll show you some of the differences, but if you want to learn about physical security and tamper-proof boxes and even social engineering, there's areas for that within DEF CON. And so you can see at the end here, we, it says, you know, general interest in software, computer architecture, phone freaking, hardware modification, and anything else that can be hacked. Almost anything can be hacked. And that's something that I've definitely learned over my years at DEF CON. Even people. Even, especially people. Uh, so where did the name come from? Dark Tangent says it came from a combination of places. There were always a lot of security cons. They all have some pretty interesting names. Summer Con, Ho Ho Con, Pump Con, Shmoo Con, uh, B-Sides. Um, he didn't want any association with the time of year or anything like that. Uh, so if you're a freak, which is a telephone hacker, or you use your phone a lot, you'll know that DEF are the three numbers above the three key. Maybe not as relevant in the age of cell phones. 
Uh, and if you're into military lingo, which is actually a big DEF CON military community, DEF CON is short for defense condition. And so the name hit on like three different levels. There was a lot of wordplay that went into the name DEF CON. Oh, and if you were here for the uh, hard, hard style, uh, this is the wrong DEF CON. That one is a Q. This is a C. <laughs> I get that one a lot. It's like, oh, the DEF CON meetup. It's like, the different DEF CON. <laughs> I haven't gotten that one yet. Now you're going to jinx me. Every time I do this at a, a, another con, somebody's going to ask, where's the music? Yes. Where's the music? Well, they have um, that, but yes. <laughs> they do. A um, lot of really good music. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so how big is DEF CON? I'm sure a lot of you have been to furry conventions or actually based on the numbers from Last Ferality, maybe not. Um, Normally, furry conventions will take the convention center of a hotel or a convention center. Uh, DEF CON long ago outgrew that. My first DEF CON was back in 2013, DEF CON 22. Uh, so Sounds 2014? Right. 2014. Yeah, I think it was 14. Uh, and the, yeah, and then it was at the Rio, uh, which is this big, big hotel in Las Vegas with a pretty massive convention center. Uh, literally the next year... They were spread out across three hotels. It was Barry Palace, Bally's, Paris, and Flamingo. Uh, the most recent in-person DEF CON pre-COVID uh, actually took up four hotels. And so it was Planet Hollywood, the Flamingo, Paris, and Bally's. All of these hotels have their own convention centers. We took up the large majority of all four of them. Uh, and I think it was like 30,000 attendees or something along those lines. Yeah, I'm not sure the number, but it, yeah, just massive amounts going on and uh, so this leads into uh, community. So with so much going on, there's literally impossible. Like, it's already hard enough to go to one convention and try to go to all the things that you want to do. Like, even here, you know, we have the DJs playing three times because maybe it conflicts with the panel. Well, this convention, there's entire, like, sub-communities that are hosting their own little event schedule, their own lineup for the weekend, either their talks or they're doing tables with stuff you could do manually, like with your hands or, uh, you know, uh, throwing parties. There's there's groups that all they do is throw parties and there's a great time. Uh, so some of these communities is our uh, DEF CON first. We basically run a mini tiny furry convention inside of DEF CON. And then there's a great other convention uh, called Diana Initiative. Uh, uh, and QueerCon, these are all different groups that all make up like this huge community and they call it uh, on Twitter Hacker Summer Camp because it starts yep. like the weekend before and extends it to the week after and there's like 20 different events outside of DEF CON and it's just like you fly into Vegas and you're just going to all these different things. Yeah, that actually brings up a really good point. Um, yeah, so LineCon obviously is our favorite con. Uh, you guys have experienced it at furry conventions. It's way more intense at DEF CON, though I hear now with it's the new social fun. distancing rules. Yeah, it is. I've never seen a talk being given in line con or at a furry convention, only at DEF CON. We've also yes. never had pizza <laughs> ordered to line con. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's how the different type of line con people are there. Like there is no pre reg and you literally just walk up with cash and be like, give me badge and you walk away with the badge. That is how long it takes to register at this convention. There's no there's no, like pre-COVID, there's no system. You just walk up and you take a badge. It's very fast. There's absolutely no reason to line up. People are camping out the night before in the, like, they rent out the convention space just to line up. And people are partying. They have, like, DJs kind of playing on their laptops. And, like, of course, there's always the beach balls. And the goal is to get it stuck in the yeah. chandelier. Like, the, the, it's the whole, like, just crazy shenanigans convention is the whole meme Oh yeah, in a convention space. And you know, you, you kind of mentioned that. Um, you mentioned Hacker Summer Camp earlier, and it's actually something that we don't include in this deck normally, but that's a really good point. Before DEF CON even happens, the week prior in Las Vegas, we have Black Hat, which is a big corporate security conference that has a lot of the same attendance as DEF CON. Uh, Besides Las Vegas happens. Um, and then before DEF CON even starts, there are two uh, DEF CON affiliated events. The DEF CON Toxic Barbecue. Um, um, and the DEF CON shoot that both happen uh, prior to DEF CON, and it's because a lot of DEF CON security likes to go to those events. And so they actually hold them off-site from the convention center. Uh, one of them is in a big park in Las Vegas. The other one is actually out in the desert. Uh, and one is a barbecue that they just, everybody buys a bunch of meat and sides and hundreds of people just yeah, at a park eating big barbecue. Cookout. The other, what was that? Is that a big cookout? Big cookout. Uh, and the other one, they go out into the desert, uh, rent uh, uh, Desert Eagles and big guns and shoot cars. 
Um, they have a lot of fun, and this is all just surrounding DEF CON before the con even starts. People are there a week prior, a week and a half prior, just to do these other events and go to Black Hat and go to B-Sides and see everything else they're doing. Um, so yeah, let's talk about a little bit what, about what you do at DEF CON. We talked and mentioned a few things, um, but there's a ton to do at DEF CON. I've been going since 2014, and I'm sure I haven't done half of it. Uh, so there's things like Hacker Jeopardy, events that you can go, and they're like game shows. Um, and it's not pre-selected, they just pull people from the audience, and you answer Jeopardy questions. A lot of memes that go on here, don't F it up, is a big one. Uh, you'll hear mm. people shouting across the hotel at Hacker Jeopardy. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, tons of panels. Then there's more organized contests. Um, like the Capture the Flag finals. For those of you who don't know what Capture the Flag is, it's actually a competitive contest that happens year round. Uh, where the goal is, well, there's two, co there's, the goal of the finals is to steal flags from your opponents. And so you'll have people on your team, it's a team sport, that are there to secure your network and stop hackers from getting in. And people on your team who are on the offense and are trying to get into other people's networks. The finals for uh, what happens in the CTF community all year happens at DEF CON. And the winners are uh, talked about in those closing ceremonies at DEF CON. Um, and in the lower right, you can see, yeah, that was a little picture of uh, people at CTF. Um, that's actually what the tables look like. They're just sitting there 18 hours a day. If you go to DEF CON to do CTF, that is your DEF CON. You're not doing anything else. Where's the ski mask? How are these real hackers? <laughs> um, you, know, you don't see a lot of ski masks these days, maybe, because of COVID. <laughs> um... But if you know you're not in the if you're not a professional CTF player, and I'm sure a lot of us aren't, I'm definitely not. Uh, you can go and you can learn. DefCon is a great educational opportunity. Uh, so they provide different villages and different areas where you can learn different skills that are related or tangential to hacking. Uh, here you can see a bunch of people at the hardware hacking village learning how to solder and how to do repairs on small electronics. Um, next one. Yeah. It's oh, a, it's it's super it's super friendly to beginners. I I talk to people all the time where they're like I really want to go to DEF CON but I don't really know anything, you know, it's intimidating and I'm like almost every like well, literally everybody there is new to something cuz there's so many different domains that you even if you're a professional, you know, been doing it since it was created at the start of time and you really know that one thing you don't know the other 400 things that are covered at this convention everybody's super friendly you can walk up to anybody and say hey what's that how does that work and the whole reason that they're there is to show you stuff like this table i don't know if this table is in particular but there are tables at the hardware hacking village where they just set up soldering stations and you know little yeah. different groups will, will have like a badge that you can put together or you know little trinkets or whatever they come up with for the year and like they give you a bag of a pcb and some parts and like have fun and then you go hang out over here where there's usually a couple people that are really skilled at it and they're like hey so this is your first time soldering here's how to do it you know if you mess up you mess up but it's you're there to kind of learn new things and be exposed to ideas you haven't seen before and there's it's super positive towards new people unlike some places where you just you know you're like oh you don't know this or i'm too busy right no the, the people there want to help you want to teach you more things Yep, if it's your first time at DEF CON, they actually do a great DEF CON 101 track. Uh, and the first talk is actually a DEF CON 101 talk, and it's how to have a good first DEF CON. And one of the things that they always say year after year after year after year is that if you leave DEF CON without having learned something, it's your own fault. Everybody that's there is yeah. passionate about what they do and is there to share it and to teach people. Obviously, there are going to be outliers. There are 30,000 people. Some people aren't going to be as friendly. But the vast majority, if you just go up to somebody and go, hey, that's really cool cool, how did you do that? They're going to be excited to talk to you about it, and that's really what DEF CON's about. Um, so another village that they have at DEF CON is the lock picking village, and you can see a bunch of the locks here. Uh, same exact idea as the soldering village, or the hardware hacking village. You can just go in, pick up a bunch of locks, um, and learn how to pick locks. They'll even have, I don't think there's a picture of one in this image, uh, clear locks where you can see the bumpers. Um, so that you can actually see what your lock picks are doing. And so you can learn to associate the feel with what's actually happening inside the lock. Uh, one thing to be careful of, of though, I love the wall of sheep. It is one of my favorite things <laughs> at DEF CON. This is, I think, that what defines DEF CON for me. Uh, if you 
are on the hotel Wi-Fi or DEF CON's Wi-Fi, and you happen to log into a website that's insecure, and we can sniff your credentials, and by we, I mean the wall of sheep people, you will go up on the wall of sheep. Uh, your username and at least a portion of your password, unobscured, gets posted up on the wall of sheep, um, and it's there for the whole con to see. Uh, I hear that this year it actually wasn't too bad, though. Yeah. Somebody told me there was Things only like five better. or six entries. Thanks, Thanks Let's Encrypt. Out there. Yeah, let, I was just about to say, Let's Encrypt <laughs> has been a huge, huge uh, motivation for uh, uh, new for websites online to start using SSL or, you know, the HTTPS, the really important S, makes it so this isn't possible. Uh, they provide free cert certificates for websites. Super easy to use. I haven't realized, I haven't bought... I run a bunch of websites, you know, I work on Ferality, I work on DEF CONFERS and, you know, a whole bunch of other projects and I have not bought a SSL certificate in, ah, fuck, I don't know, five years? And yeah, I mean, we had to, what we, we did for we had to buy one. I, I don't know. It's like we had to buy one for Ferality for the video players to work in the dealer's <laughs> den because YouTube DL sucks. And so uh, uh, they didn't trust. <laughs> we'll less, talk about that encrypt. on Sunday. Yeah, we'll talk about that on Sunday. But anyways, we had to buy like three different fucking certificates just to get one that worked because they all wanted to do this stupid process to verify that you are Ferality. I'm like. Uh, let's encrypt. I want cert done, you know, and it's free and I'm trying to pay you like $90 and you won't give me a cert. Uh, whatever. So <laughs> use HTTPS. This is the moral of the story, though. But um... <laughs> oh, yeah, Roots, no. Oh, yeah. Roots Village. Um, yeah. So Roots Village is also really cool. Obviously, DEF CON has been going on for 30 years now, and a lot of the people who started DEF CON now have families and have kids if they didn't already. Uh, and so to make sure that those people could continue to come to DEF CON, DEF CON actually founded a village called Roots Village. Um, and this is run by a third-party organization, and what it is is it's basically hacker daycare. You can come, drop off your kids, um, and Roots Village will teach them how to hack. There's some really cool articles if you go out and search on the web. Look for Roots Village elections. Um, a couple years ago, I think it was DEF CON 2019, they had an election yeah. village where you could hack voting machines. And they brought the kids in yeah. there and taught these and kids how to hack up. voting machines. They tore it up. It was insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's Roots Village. Uh, there's also Badge Life, and this is my favorite part, though it, it pains me a little bit at the moment. Take all my um, money. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. All, so, context, all of my badges got stolen right before BLFC, because I was bringing them to BLFC to do this panel, and where I normally show them off. Um, but Badge Life is, is really cool. Um, badge Life is where people who are enthusiastic about hardware and making challenges and doing really neat things with PCBs, these groups will design their own badges. And DEF CON FERS is one of them, and we'll get into that. Um, but you can see a bunch of different interesting badges there. Uh, the Hack for Satan badge in center top. Uh, the Mr. Robot <laughs> badge with the... Uh, uh, what was that? The F Society face, uh, the yeah. butterfly or the dragonfly badge with all the LEDs. These are all badges that are unofficial and were made by passionate people in the community who wanted to make something and, and give it to the community. Some of them will give them out for free and you have to do contests. You know, they'll say, oh, I hid a badge somewhere in the hotel and here's a super close up picture of where it is. Go find it. First one to find it, it's your badge. Other ones it's will just sell it hunt. to recoup costs. Yep, scavenger hunt. Exactly. Yeah. Um, others will just sell it or take it for donations to recoup costs. Some of these badges are your access pass to parties. Uh, so DC801, famously, if you want to get into their party, you have to have their badge. Um, and then there's, of course, a ton of parties. And when I say a ton of parties, I mean a ton of parties. Um, DEF CON hosts their own parties. They have pool parties, inside dances, the black and white party. Um, but also the sub-conventions like QueerCon, DEF CON FERS, Diana Initiative, etc. all host their own parties. And the corporations who are going to DEF CON to recruit talent or to meet customers are also hosting their own parties. So much so that... <laughs> There's actually a site next called DEF CON Parties. Yep, next slide. There's actually a site called DEF CON oh, Parties yes. that chronicles all of the links <laughs> to get invited to all of these parties. Um, and this isn't a rendering error. It really is that many and that small. Yeah. Uh, because all of these corporations 
have secret links where it's like, oh, our party's invite only, and these guys will go out and hunt them down and make sure that you can go in and attend the party. Um, so I've been to Intel's parties, I've been to Microsoft parties, um, and I was invited to all of them, right? <laughs> hey, they sent you the email with the link, right? Exactly, they sent me an email. I have an email that says I mean, you have been invited. It's not, it's not like you're breaking in. The whole point of the party is no. to be like, hey, buy our stuff, you know, or come work for us, usually. Yep. So what the um, heck is DEF CON furs? Well, are you a furry? Do you like to hack stuff? And by hack, it could be either like physical things or a computer, you know, then basically, hello, welcome to the party. Uh, even if you're not furry a lot, we are uh, pretty known now in the DEF CON community because we bring the fursuiters to the convention. So uh, we are a known entity uh, at DEF CON. Uh, uh, I know some of the people, you know, the organizers, and, and we're all pretty cool, and it just, it's super welcoming community. We feel really welcome there, and we like to bring a fun element there. So if we, DEF CON... We, we, were actually a pro, we were actually an item in the scavenger hunt. <laughs> yeah, twice, I think. It, it, uh, we didn't cover that. The, the scavenger hunt is this completely ridiculous list of things you have to find for points, like a uncut sheet of two dollar bills or a, a, a door from like a, a a ford pinto or you know a fursuiter was when we were all like they had to bring a fursuiter to the table or like it was it was the name fox on, hunt on table a, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then uh it, it's just like all these stupid things to find it's just all fun and games but um basically we hosted an event there and a little uh, mini convention inside of it. And it's basically like a home base. You're around other furries that, you know, you may or may not know from other conventions. And it's that familiar feeling, feeling in our own little space. And then you can venture out into this vast DEF CON, all these different uh, vendor halls full of the different villages. Uh, uh, villages is basically like a, a, a designated topic for an area. So it's like lock picking village, uh, election booth hacking village, uh, car hacking village. You know, they're all called villages, but it's just basically a topic room. Um, uh, it's just we, we, we host a central suite, which is the party suite, and, and then we, some, we you know, normally pre COVID, we have talks there. Uh, we'll, we'll probably pick that up again once things are happening normal in yeah. the world uh for the we last also had years, soldering did stations online and bit. stuff didn't we yeah to, to help you fix the badge or if you were working on a project you maybe you're, you're you need a quiet space away from the bustle you know you just can hang out in the suite um we also have a bar if you're over over 21 uh a, a free bar Yep. Basically, but you, you do need to, you do need to have a DefCon Furs badge to to get free drinks. We're not just giving out free booze. Yeah. Um. Oh God, it's cut off a little bit. No, there's no words under there. Oh, okay. Uh. So basically, it started off as as uh I got invited to my first DefCon. Actually, the same year you did DefCon 22 was my very yep. first DefCon. And I ended up hanging out with uh, K Fox, who's another founder and board member, and, and uh, another friend of ours. And it was my first DEF CON, and I was hanging out in a hotel room with two other furries, and was like, you know what? I wonder who else is at this convention as a furry. So literally, I spent like six hours scrolling through Twitter, hashtag DEF CON, looking for little animal icons. I'm like, oh, that's a furry, that's a furry, that's a furry. Is that and how I was I like, yo, your room? Probably. <laughs> I, 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 I hunted down everybody like this is just me. I just wanted to have like, let's all get together. And, you know, on Saturday night, we'll, we'll invite everybody over to a hotel room. We'll just get pizza and and watch DEF CON TV. And and, you know, just it's the furry meetup because we're all here. We might as well say hello. You know, so I started scrolling through and, and messaging everyone. And like everybody turned up. I think we had like eight, ten people because it was very informal. I was just DMing people on Twitter. Right. And yeah, uh, I just happened to be uh, a Vegas local that was in that was going to defcon and so we it was a great time a bunch of people showed up we kind of did it again the next year uh 23 and you know it's like hey telegram is now a thing because you know as soon as you invent a new social media platform that has stickers people migrate to it so you know it's 
you know, aim, yim, kick, to Skype, and then I, I'm still sure there's people on IRC, but you know, now yeah, it's I'm Telegram, and I'm sure this, <laughs> I'm sure this is going to be the next service. Uh, uh, we was like, okay, let's make a group where we can all join, and it started becoming a regular thing, and it's like, you know, let's have like an actual room for this so we rented a hotel suite like a, a presidential suite in in the hotel and and uh made it like this is just for defcon first there's no one's staying in it you know and that became like the first official year of defcon first i think it was 2017 um yep and we've been doing it ever since and growing and growing and now you know we've had hundreds of people come through our suite uh and, and of course we're known in the whole thing. We have all these cool events going on. Um, so sometimes we're involved in other people's contests, you know, with like the scavenger hunt. We try to have our own little things. So usually we make a badge. We'll talk a little about that in a second, but we traditionally put a challenge on it where maybe there's some like hidden links on the badge that lead you to some random website that, that says ooh woo in it. And then you gotta like right click on the source and see some other hint to go somewhere else. And it all ends up to a final like goal where you have to hand me a piece of paper with something written on it. Like I think that was what we did for the first year to more complex things that were never solved to more simpler things that were a lot of fun and was actually was able solvable in a single day when we're all there. Um, of course we are, uh, we're a nonprofit ourselves through a 501c3 nonprofit called Hack Your Lives is the parent organization of DEF CON FIRST. And uh, we also, typically host uh, either a, uh, a a raffle or a silent auction of random things donated from the community, like other badges and stuff, to raise money for a local Vegas charity to kind of give back to that community. You can't have a furry convention or a furry event without being charitable. That's kind of our thing, right? Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in going to DEF CON, we have our own room block. So, uh, especially if enough of you are going, uh, we, DEF CON happened this year, but it wasn't very, you know, big, obviously, compared to normal. I think it's going to pick up next year, hopefully, and then Definitely. fully in full swing at some point. But if, if you're planning to go to DEF CON or it sounds interesting, interested, interesting to you, uh, we do have our own hotel room block, which is inside of the DEF CON room block, but we're all like close together so we can hang out and you're close to the DEF CON first suite. Um, our website for this will be going, launching a little bit closer to the convention, but you can follow us at DC FURS. DCFURS is our official Twitter. Uh, if you use Twitter, that's the easiest way to stay up to date on us. Otherwise, if you use Telegram at DEF CON FURS, completely spelled out. Uh, is our public telegram group. That's like our primary hubs of information. Uh, if you're interested in going to DEF CON, uh, the telegram group is also just an all year thing for people interested in these topics. It's not like specific to the convention. I think we have like over 600 people. Uh, we're, we're about to hit 700, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's just this huge community of, of people that have absolutely no knowledge about the things, but it sounds interesting to people who are veterans in a certain topic. You know, uh, how your interactions go based on who's online at the moment, but it's usually pretty positive. Sure. <laughs> uh, so badges. This uh, it's one of my favorite badges. The it's the, I, I it's still the love very, that one. It's the very first electronic badge we did. It's the second badge we ever made. The first one was kind of like an engraved credit card sized uh, bottle opener. But this this one that's the only one PCB. I don't have. We took a PCB, we designed a PCB, the team did uh, from scratch, like in KiCad, uh, they, they designed all the electrical diagrams and the circuitry and, and the art of it using the, the solder mask is the black and then you have a silk screen white and then the gold is the, P is the, the actual conductive material itself to make this art element. And we added a really cool feature that has been a very good thing and also kind of a little bit of a curse because everybody wants it on every badge now. Uh, if you tap the nose, we had a a, a sensor there. Yep, capacitive. Uh, capacitive touch sensor that told the chip you touched the nose and it would turn the LEDs on the face to say boop. Uh, 
and everybody freaking loved it. You know, you might have seen these at like Biggest Little FC or MFF, you know, a bunch of the furries that from the DEF CON go to all the other conventions, so you'll see it around. Uh, they all just go up to them and be like, boop, 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 and it just says boop on the face. Um, oh, I thought I was going to say yeah. something. Uh, that's fully programmable. It's open source. It's on our GitHub. We've had a community in. Uh, uh, Look through the slides. We show all that too. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is our the the next year theme was Westworld. So this is our host badge, and we had different f furry versions of like the characters of Westworld that we put on acrylic. This is cool, but we're never doing it again. Never doing it again. All of mine never are broken. Never doing it again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the acrylic was so fragile, like the ears would break off so easy, but it looked really cool. It was basically a, a acrylic plate that we printed, full printed on, and had like an outline of where the LEDs go. So this actually screws on to that badge where the little yellow circles are next to the eye sockets with like actual screws, and it would just stay there, and you could see the LEDs through it like the, the top center one on that right image. And uh, yep. it was a really cool design. Um, all of it's on GitHub, um, github.com slash defconfers. Uh, all of the the designs, the, the materials and parts, if you're super into electronics or kind of want to put one together yourself, you could design your own badge using the exact same like reference we have there. All of the code for how it works for the brain is there, the firmware, the part list of what you need to buy. Um, there are some closed source, source parts, and that's that's the badge challenge because all of these do have challenges on them as well. Yeah, I think we commit it after afterwards. But yeah, um, once it's solved, yeah. You want to cover this? Uh, this is just an example script um, to kind of show you some of the stuff that's been done with the badge. So because it's open source and they're running MicroPython, you can actually really easily create your own animations and things uh, to run on the badge. And a lot of people have done it. And it's really, because it's MicroPython, it's super easy, super readable. And so even if you've never programmed a PCB, it's really approachable and people will help you do it. Um, Go ahead. So yeah, join us. Um, so Something, something, something dark side. We have cookies. Um, we'd love to see you at DEF CON. We'd love to see you in the DEF CON first chat. Um, yeah, I'm glad to, uh, to, to kind of share this all with you because this is something both Aloe and I are really passionate about and we've put a lot of our time into almost as much as Ferality yeah. at this point. Would you like to accept our third party cookies? <laughs> Different kind of cookies. Um, so thank you everybody for coming. We're gonna open up for questions. We did get two on Defcon or on uh, Discord as well. If you're in the host instance with us, I believe you can just stand on the emblem uh, and that'll let us hear your questions. Is that right? Yes. Awesome. So uh, does anybody have any questions you wanna come up and ask? Or I'll read the ones in Discord. Cool, yeah, I was gonna say, I have them pulled up in Discord too, if you want me to grab them. Um, the first <laughs> one is, is it? Oh God. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> I use ArchBTW. Um, uh, so the first question, though, was, is it true that you should not bring any electronic devices to DEF CON whatsoever, including your smartphone? Yes and no. Yep, that's, that's pretty much my answer. Yes and no. Um, it really depends on your threat model, right? Uh, so I know that for me, uh, I don't bring any of my work stuff to DEF CON, so I don't bring my work phone, my lap work laptop, anything like that. Uh, but I bring my personal smartphone and I kind of accept that risk. If you have a lot of sensitive stuff on there that you'd be worried about somebody figuring out, maybe keep it off in, in your hotel room or don't bring it and bring a burner phone. Um, it really depends on you and your threat model. So um, the, it kind of ruins the fun a little bit, but there's a lot of like a bubble of Hey, it's scary. Watch out, kid. Don't do this. But it's part of the fun is to project that. It, it's not so much of reality. So, like, you don't need to show up completely wrapped in tinfoil unless you're competing in a tinfoil hat contest, which is a real thing, and it's really cool. Uh, uh, you know, don't do stupid things. Don't leave your computer unlocked in the frickin' lobby, you know? Don't use the public Wi-Fi. Don't, like, let, you know, the person borrow your computer for a contest for three days and get it back later and use it. Like, don't yeah. do those things. It's a bad idea. But, you know, usually if you're not looking for trouble and you're not there to kind of be messed with, people don't mess with you. You know, update your phone, software, 
leave the Bluetooth off unless you really need it. Leave the leave the super secret unreleased uh, patent at home. You know, <laughs> don't make yourself a target. It's fine. It's fine. But we love scaring people. You just just like, oh man, you can't. You, you're just gonna need a. You're gonna need to get a cup and string. That's the only way you can communicate. That's secure. <laughs> I mean, so I no still don't bring my work stuff, right? Like, I still definitely yeah. don't bring my work stuff for two reasons. One is I can use that same scary bubble on them and go, hey, I can't bring anything, man. Like, all your work stuff no might get hacked. I'm gonna no be off the duty. grid. No on call. That's why it started, um, right? <laughs> it's actually. Um, and I think we had a question in the audience, Cass. All right. Hey, this is actually a question from Flamey. Uh, he wants to know when we're getting one of those badges for the charity auction. Oh, uh, oh I could do. <laughs> I could do the mask. We could do that. We uh, yeah. We'll have a brief board meeting after the panel and figure that out. <laughs> I didn't think about it. It's actually That's a good, good point. Question. I had to ask. Yeah. So, we we so we make our own badge. We we kind of showed it off a little bit but every year usually we make a badge and you can buy it online if you're not going to the convention um it helps support like it's how we fund all the convention stuff we do basically um they're usually around 120 150 bucks uh but we usually make a couple extra ones each year uh to give to the charity auctions at other conventions or whatever so like we had one at the blfc charity auction and some other conventions uh Let's see. Yeah, we, we we had them at FC uh, last time around. We've we've had them kind of all over the place, and then we've given them out for contests and thing on our Twitter as well. Let's see, do we have another? Oh, noise said do. it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So somebody asked Kaburi for some reason going to a con where hacking is encouraged. Anyone that doesn't have a good kung fu is just looking to have a bad day. Am I wrong? Uh, yeah, I think you're wrong. Um, and, and I don't mean to be glib about it, but honestly, like, just like Aloe and I were saying earlier, it, it, I think it's a mischaracterization to call it a con where hacking is encouraged. It's a con where there are a lot of hackers who are passionate about hacking, um, but a lot of it is, if you don't know these terms, white hat, um, meaning that it's not malicious hacking, it's just learning how to get into systems, and this is all stuff that people have consented to allowing you to do. Uh, for example, one year, I don't know if anybody remembers uh, the black phone, it was meant to be an Android <laughs> phone that was super secure, and they brought it to DEF CON and said, hey, we want you guys to come hack our phone, here it is. Um, Come hack it. I swear to God, and it was hacked <laughs> before I got my badge. Like, before I got out of line con to get my badge. Like, I made my way over there, and they're like, somebody already hacked it. And I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. Um, but typically, like Aloe said, if you're not um, putting, if you're not doing stupid things and, like, making yourself a target, people aren't going to target you. You'll, you're you're going to be safe. Yeah. There's a lot of shenanigans, and a lot of things get hacked at DEF CON, but usually they're set up by people that are, like, either putting up a, a server that's connected to the network intentionally part of some whatever meme or whatever challenge uh uh the there's another aspect to hacking as well the word hack has always been shown in movies and stuff like the guy in the in the bot in the in the mask you know at night you know typing on the keyboard randomly and you see some freaking script scroll i've never seen that even from anyone yeah, no except the fakes the fake hacker like meme but like hacker type no nah, type.com <laughs> <laughs> right that's exactly <laughs> but hacking means a lot of different things and it's just kind of going against the norm figuring it out and it's kind of like the whole hack your lives is the name of our non like our parent organization it's kind of becoming like what challenging whatever it is questioning it making your own determinations about stuff, finding your own path into something. Uh, so hacking people, obviously that you're not like, this isn't the, the Neo, you know, we're not there yet. We don't, I'm not here with an implant, you know, maybe one day, but uh, you can, you can like social engineer people. There's a whole village for that. It's one of my favorites, but the, uh, you can hack people where you're convincing them, someone you're not, you know, you walk into any place with a clipboard and, the, and a safety vest on and you're, you're probably there for a reason. And it's, not my job to worry about it right you know sure come in my building yeah. i've never seen you before right uh there's stuff like that it, you you know there's the people in the lock picking village they're they're learning how to to pick locks because it's fun um 
uh, there's there's something really cool in that village as well, or the Tamper Evident Village, I think, which is right next to it. They have an actual like life size chest that has like probably a few dozen or more mechanisms in it, and it's a real life uh, like nobody talk or what is it? Nobody talk, oh, no, um... and you'll be fine. The the bomb thing. I forget the name of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have you have you have like you have to work with the team and and like flip this thing and change this enter the code right and like defuse the bomb and it's more realistic because it's physical it's not like a game obviously it doesn't explode you know but it, it'll it'll sound off like noise you, or something yeah yeah, yeah if you die and, and different people and teams take turns trying to get in this and and one time i think it wasn't even a, a badge uh thing but uh it's really cool like there's all these little different areas of stuff to do and they're all under the realm of hacking it's not just computers yep absolutely um so we got a ton of questions in last minute we will answer all of these on discord uh there are two that i think i want to filter down to though because i think they're both really good uh mm -hmm. the first one is what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you at defcon or defcon furs i guess personally crazy Are we allowed to talk about those things here at Ferality? Is this? <laughs> as long as it's okay. <laughs> Safe for work. Safe for work. Okay, I gotta think Safe harder. Safe for work. Uh, I know one guy. Uh... So, one thing you you may not know, but will if you go to the convention, like watch the the, the panels, is literally a oh, entire. Oh, says the fire. The fire. Kitty, Kitty told me to say. Kitty told me to tell you the fire, Allo. The when fire. they set our dinner on fire. Oh, <laughs> the restaurant. Oh yeah, that was so stupid. Okay, so <laughs> I, I didn't think about Defcon because it happened while we were at dinner. Uh, we were at a Korean barbecue, and uh, this place. It was it was this year. So like the guy came and they cooked everything on the thing, even though like it's literally right there and I could reach it. But they came and did it for you. And like, I guess we were at the end and he decided he was done, but he put the food on there and then he like went somewhere and he never came back. And then it like was starting to turn black and we're like, uh, 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 <laughs> do? and then it caught on fire. <laughs> I've got to ask, was this at eight? Was this at eight ounce? Was the place's name eight ounce? I don't remember the name of the place. Okay, because uh, like literally in Vegas, a Korean barbecue place named Eight Ounce. The same thing happened to me in Sniper. <laughs> so what made it worse though is so we have a, a pile of like really delicious looking expensive meat now turning into charcoal, on fire, a grease fire, and the guy comes is like, oh crap, and he tries to put it out with salt. He throws salt at it, and now that's crackling and like hitting me. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and he grabs it to get it, like to take it to the kitchen. He grabs it with a tongue, and he picks it up, and now he has like this tray of burning meat, and he's walking around, and like there's a person sitting like right here to him, and they're like wearing like skinny shorts, and they're trying to get out of the way of the grease. And this is a totally stupid thing. <laughs> I have pictures. That's I'll have crazy. to post them later. I, I didn't hear about that. Um, for me, mine is pretty pretty uh, quick. Uh, I was walking around. I found a – or somebody came up to me and handed me a three-and-a-quarter-inch floppy disk. This was, um, I think, 2017, the year that John McAfee was keynoting. Oh, no. Um, yeah. And somebody came up to me and handed me a floppy disk. I finally found a floppy drive, uh, hooked it up to a laptop that was not my main laptop. Um, and it was actually an invite to a John McAfee party at the Hustler Club in Las Vegas. Um, I actually got way too scared to go. But yeah, I could have gone and party with John McAfee. <laughs> um, and then the I last question. That... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I know someone uh, made some USBs and dropped them around with like the source code of FA. From yep, that one I remember time that. that happened at DEF CON 2. Um, and then the right. last question that I, that I think we're going to answer here, uh, and then we'll answer the rest of these on Discord, uh, uh, is from Kitty. How do you get involved with DEF CON first? How can I help? Ah, yes. So uh, uh, we are an entirely volunteer uh, or community. All of the uh, events that we put on take a lot of uh, help from the community itself. If you just want to be part of the community, like I said, uh, Twitter, DC Furs, our Telegram group, at DEF CON Furs, like spelled out. It's a public channel. 
it's a good way to get connected with us. And then uh, for at DEF CON, if you're planning to go and you want to help out, you know, uh, help us put on the event at the at the show, uh, just reach out to us. You know, send me a DM on Twitter, DC Furs, or message us in the group. Or if you follow our website, usually we'll open up a form for an event as it gets closer. Uh, if we're and if we're doing something a little bigger and having talks and stuff. Uh, if you or anyone you know are interested in talking about something, whether it's computer hacking related or not, we, we have panels on on life topics, you know, dealing with mental illness, uh, uh, how to do this really cool project, you know, whether it's game related or or I know uh, that was a really good panel we had uh, two years ago. Uh, uh, was it Nin Ninji? I, Nifty, Ninji I forget their with name, the Animal Crossing Ninja. panel? Yeah, the, the, he 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 blew up on Twitter because he started reverse engineering Animal Crossing, and you know everybody wants to know like, what do I need to do to get this one thing, and it's only on this one day with this weather, and it's like, well, I looked at the code, and you just got to do this, and then boom, million followers, right? And it's just yep. like he talked about it. So whether you got you know some technical or not, and you want to give a panel, uh, we we open up our uh, speaker call 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 for call presentations. For papers. Yep. Yeah, call for papers, call for... It's really simple, just tell us what you want to do. And, you know, we talk with you and figure out if you're going to be there, or it'll be an online show, I don't know what we're doing next year, but yep. we'll figure it out. And, um, and expect more information to be uh, more fleshed out by probably January or February. We're actually starting the planning cycle for next DEF CON now. Um, and so we actually have an announcements chat on Telegram as well, if you don't want to be in the, you know, 700-person chat, uh, where we'll announce things like our calls for presentation, calls for DJs, um, and call for volunteers, right? If you want to come help, that we'll, we'll post about it, and we'd love to have you. Yeah. All right, I awesome. think we're going to wrap it up here thank you everybody for coming uh and also watching our panel on the live stream um we hope that you found it at least interesting if not a little bit informative about defcon uh, if it sparks your interest uh defcon.org is the official like big convention has all the dates and stuff uh, uh it's august 12th 12th through 15th i believe yeah yeah about then, usually the second weekend of August is what it happens uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, come check us out, Twitter, DC Furs, um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yep, thanks everybody. Yeah.